uh, you receive the anointing more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is alive. Do you believe it? Our God is alive. Hallelujah. You know, praise be the living God. See, we, when, when we believe in Jesus, we believe in His resurrection. Amen. When there is, is resurrection, there is power. Tell to your neighbor, today you receive power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, I was, while I was um, preparing, actually I, have, I had a message. I was preparing, the Lord told me. It was when I was at, in my home, He said, speak life. There needs to be resurrection in the people in Suramban Life Assembly today. Amen. Resurrection in the spirit. It means dry bones is going to be awakened today. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a revival? Amen. When you, when you declare, you will receive the revival. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I declare today. Dry bones. Awaken. Hallelujah. The moment you say that, you will, your, dry, your bones, will, the flesh will come forth. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be in the presence of God. Amen. All the songs, man, you guys can sing. I like the song, you know, I, I am who I am. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I've, never, I've never listened to that song before. It's very really nice. I think, I think it's, it's to, to awaken for those who are sleepy. Am I right? If you know who you are, if you only know who Jesus is, you will shout for joy. The life that Jesus lived on earth, the life that He died and He rose again, if only you know who God is, who Jesus is, you won't be quiet. Hallelujah! You won't be quiet. Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again for humanity. It's written what? For God so loved the world. Did he say, for God so loved the Christians? For God so loved the world that he gave what? His one and only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. We're going to live forever with Jesus. So we got to live right and we're going to live because I want today the dry bones to be awakened today. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. The message, you can call it, My dry bones is alive today. You can write there as your sermon title. We declare, we say my, I, because we want to what? To declare in our own lives. It's so important. You know, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that what? Him, that what? That Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you have uh, New King James? You have New King James? Someone can read? Verse 1 to verse 5. Hallelujah. Anyone? This can just read, no problem. You have a mic as well, it'll be great. Yeah. Uh, 37. Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 5. You read verse 1 first. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's there. Okay. The hand of the Lord came upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit. Hmm? And he was full of. This is sometimes our life. When we go out to the working place, when we go to our colleges, when we go to see our friends, sometimes you feel very dry. How many of you feel that? You feel that. Why is my working environment so sad? Full of problems. Or, or, or you guys are having an amazing time in your working place. How many of you are having a time of your life? No one, up or down? Come on, can, can you all react a bit? Who is, who is happy in your, in your working place? Oh, what do you want? Praise God. Who is like, sometimes, you know, it's very hard. When we are Christians, we are the light in the dark place. When you read this verse, uh, in verse 1, go back to verse 1. God will send you to a place which is sometimes dry. He wants you to declare joy and life in the place of dry bones. And when God took Ezekiel there, 
He's showing him that God can do the impossible. Imagine I bring some bones here, some skeletons, and I want you all to raise the skeleton up. See, even he's laughing. It's not even, po is it possible? Come on, doctor, he's a doctor here. From a skeleton to a human being, it is impossible. But by my God, anything is possible. God was showing Ezekiel that he can do the impossible. When he can do in the, in the impossible, so can we, when we believe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For those who are seeing online, if you don't know who Jesus is, read Ezekiel 37 that your dry bones will be awakened today. Hallelujah. And for those who are sitting here, you are even more blessed because you came to church. This is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. When you drive and you come to church, it is a sacrifice and God honors it. Hallelujah. God honors it when you are in church because you are sacrificing your time for Jesus Christ and He watches and He's going to bless you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even I brought a friend of mine. He's, a, he's, a, he's our church sound man, actually. I told him, let's follow me. Follow me for I follow Christ. He said, okay. Amen. And he is living the, the right proof because he does business. And the moment he reads the Bible, his whole week is blessed. Am I right? Hallelujah. He reads the book of Revelation. I told him, it's okay, even if you don't understand, just read it. You know why? Revelation chapter 1 verse 2 says what? Blessed is he who reads. So you want blessing? Read the Bible. And when you go to your business, you go to your work, God's going to give you the extra favor. You receive the favor of God. Hallelujah. How many of you want a favor in your workplace? How many of you want a favor in your family? How many of you want a favor in your marriage? Come on, we need the favor of God. His two hands went up. Hallelujah. We need God more than anything in these last days. I tell you, the, the days that are happening is not good. I think all this, the world that you see, the young generation, they are all going where? They are going down the drain. We have to rise up. Hallelujah. We have to rise up. If we don't rise up, who will? Amen. So you, you text or you call the person who, has, who is in home right now and say, come to church. You want blessing? Come to church. That's where you receive life. Do you know the Word of God is so powerful? It's active. As a double-edged sword, piercing what? Both the soul and marrow. That means when you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, the, the Word goes into your bones. Can you imagine that? When it goes into your bones, your nerve system, everything gets functions up and you will receive life and your sickness will leave you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm talking about a supernatural God here. Are you ready for the Bible? Are you ready for the Word? Okay, you may continue. Verse 2. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Bones that were, see, they are making it more obvious. Bones that are very dry. Is bones dry? Can you imagine a very dry bones? That means basically there's no more life in it. It's gone. It's finished. Alright? And before I go further, you know, while I was sitting here when you're worshipping, the Lord gave a, a word for everyone here. He's saying that your dry bones will be awakened when you want to receive it. Sometimes we come to church, but our mind is not in church. Sometimes we come to church, our body is here, but your mind is not here. So bring back your mind. Focus in the Word of Jesus. Focus in God. And I'm telling you, God is going to open up His doors for you. This is a prophecy for everyone here today. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? you all understand what I'm saying? If, you are, if I'm very fast, say yes. If you are, <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay? You know, you guys are better. You know, in one church, in, in my church last two weeks ago, I said, all the dead people say amen. They shout amen. <laughs> Two of them shout amen. <laughs> they say, oh no. I say, you got to listen to what I'm talking. 
Amen. <laughs> so it's very important to have spiritual understanding. When you read the Old Testament, you know this is the Old Testament, right? Go to Romans chapter 15, verse 4. In the book of Romans chapter 15, verse 4, it says what? The Old Testament, the old writing was written for our what? Our learning. The Old Testament was written so that we can learn of how the history was. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, when you read the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, it's talking about Jesus Christ dying for all humanity. In the book of Genesis, God has given the fulfillment of what is going to happen on planet Earth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So when you read Romans chapter, yeah, and I will put an enemy between you and, your, and the woman and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your heel and you shall bruise his. Can you see the his capital H there? Who's that? Who's that? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! This is talking about Jesus Christ from the beginning because God always has a plan. You have a plan. And God knows your plan. Hallelujah. Are, are we also happy that God knows our plan? God knows what we're going to do. God will bring us the right path. Sometimes, you know, when people come to you and say, hey, I think you shouldn't do this. That is God sending help. Don't say, don't talk to me. I don't need your help. That's pride. Tell your neighbor, don't be prideful. <laughs> You know pride is a killer? How many of you all know pride is a killer? The moment you have pride, that is the end. That is the end. It's going to be very, very hard. Especially when a young boy or a young girl come to an elder person and say, what to do? Am I right? A young boy once came to me. No, a literally young boy say, Pastor, I think you shouldn't talk this way. No, I can take a ketot. <laughs> Yeah, I think this way. I think he said you should. I think you should. This way, this is better. Look at him. No, Lord told me I'm sending him. Listen to him. Sometimes God challenges us, especially how many mothers here. When your children tells you what to do, how do you feel? Hmm. Think, think of it. It's like, wow, how dare you? I gave birth to you. I gave you food. I gave you milk. I gave you everything. You telling me what to do? Sometimes we got to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. What the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you today. Amen. Amen. So Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says what? The Old Testament is for our learning. Alright. I'll give you four stories. Four stories that happen in a very unusual way. If you go to Hosea chapter 1 verse 2. Hosea was, was told to marry what? To marry a who? A what? A harlot. Hosea was told by who? By God to marry a? What's a harlot? A what? Can you imagine God asking you to marry a prostitute? Can you imagine? Can, <laughs> some of you all are opening eyes big. I don't know why. Can you imagine? God does something, sometimes it's so unusual to show. You know why God did that? To show Isaiah the condition of the Israel people. To show that this is the condition of the Israel, this his people. You know why? They are adulterous generation. You know what they do? They go to what? To many gods. Sometimes God is teaching, God told Isaiah, this is what is happening. The second one, Naaman. First, second Kings chapter 5 verse 10. Naaman was told to dip in the Jordan. You all know the story, right? Second Kings was dipped in the Jordan. The third one, Moses was told to make a what? A brazen serpent. Numbers 21 verse 4 to 9. You know why he has to do that? To show them that in a few thousand years from now, Jesus is going to hang on the cross. Hallelujah. God does something with a plan. You feel today why you're here today? Because God wants you to hear this message because He's got a plan for you today. 
When tomorrow something happens, if some new thing happens in your life, you will know that God is heading you towards His calling. Hallelujah. How many of you want to know your calling? How many of you already, you're, you are in the call of God, but you want to know what is your call? What is your main calling? Why are you coming to, the, to serve the Lord? What are you doing? How many of you want to do that? Want to know that? Yes. It's very important to know your calling. And, and your, do you know, when I say your calling, basically, what you do the most, that's your calling. You know, I love uh, playing drums. I'm a drummer, okay? I started playing drums when I was 10 years old. And I watched my elder brother play drums, so I play drums every single day. I play and play and play. I play drum until the age of 19. Then I stopped. Then I went to guitar. Then I started playing guitar and non-stop every day. Now, I don't play anything. Once in a while I worship lead because I have a worship team now in the church. So once in a while I'm in a worship because why worship is my lifestyle. Hallelujah. You want to worship God, you, you love the Lord, you worship every day. Even what you hear in your car is important. Even what you hear in your room is important. God is everywhere. Hallelujah. When they come to church, listen to song. Hosanna. At home, all this worldly song. So what is going on? What is going on? Are we living a double life? You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm talking? Amen. If you're if you're you're feeling it, say ouch. <laughs> if you if you agree with me, say amen. When you are listening, to, I, I I'm very strict. You can ask him. I'm very strict with my worship team. I'm so strict sometimes. I sometimes I got to cool down a bit. I told them the moment you have a wrong spirit and you go up in worship, that spirit will enter the people. As a worship team, you are releasing the power of God. And the moment you are having a bad spirit, what do you think will come out? Evil spirit. So it's very important what you do in your private life. Hallelujah. And it's so quiet now. Why are you so quiet? This is reality. This is where you learn. In church, it's where you learn. And when, when, when I speak to my worship team, I, told, I, I always tell them, if I ever hear you listening to one burly song, if, if I happen to hear, you're dead. So when, they, when I go to the car, they look at me, oh. I say, no, that's, that's not how it's supposed to be. You have to be with Jesus always. I'm telling you, loving Jesus and listening to God's song is more fun. Fun than any other worldly song. Because I love my Creator. I love Jesus. Why should I succumb to the ways of the world, the trend of the world, talk tick, you know, tick tock. I don't have, <laughs> sorry, I, just, I, don't, I don't, all these things, I don't agree on, I only have Instagram, okay? And it's like, for what? The trend. Come on, Jesus is my trend. I can still have fun knowing Jesus. I think I shared before the grab story over here. I think I did. And a few times, even the other day I was in a mall. This opposite, opposite our church is a very super big mall. It's like a very big mall, Tropicana Gardens. And I go there once in a while, and I saw this young, uh, young. I think she was a, a, a young mix. She's a, I'm not sure, Chinese or Chinese. I'm not sure. She's sitting there. She was so sad. And they have this really nice bookstore, really beautiful bookstore. It's like so massive. It's like almost, uh, almost nine times. Eight to nine times bigger than this place. It's just a bookstore. And they have a really nice uh, lounge. So sitting there, she was so sad. And I look scary. You know, I'm tall and, you know, to see me, I said, whoa, this Indian dude. Then, so I went and I said, why is so sad? I brought a coffee. I put there. I said, why are you so sad? She, first, she looked at me. She's like, <gasps> I said, <see. laughs> relax, relax, relax. I said, I said, coffee doesn't, just want to tell you that you're thinking, of you, you have problem with your with your spouse, with your 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 partner. You're having some problem. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is going to change that. Be happy. She started to cry. When the Holy Spirit functions in you, you will tell people what they already know inside. The Holy Spirit will reveal what is inside. I told the guy in the grab, 
your wife will have a child in three months. I, at first, I panicked. What if he already has a child? You know, all these child things, it's pretty scary, right? Can you imagine? He said, hey, I'm not married, lah, bro. <laughs> Can you imagine? So I was like, God, is that really you? If I say this word, my pastoral credibility is gone. If I'm a mistake, oh my, just say it. I, when I say it, he started to cry. He said, we are actually playing for so many years. I said, God's going to give you one child. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. So I proclaim, dry bones, wake up. Hallelujah. As a believer of Jesus Christ, we got to speak life. If you know someone is gossiping, say, stop gossiping. I don't want that curse. Tell them. The moment someone starts talking, say, hey, 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 don't talk to me. I don't like to hear you. Talk, speak life, speak life. Amen. Amen. The mo- you know why? That is the very, it's a very interesting topic in a church. Trust me, every church has. Every church has. They do like to talk. And I, there was once, I walked in the room, there was silence. I said, why? If you all are talking good things, why you must be quiet? I said, no, no, no. I was talking about the other guy. I said, ah. Don't do that. Speak life. Okay. When, when you know someone got a problem, what you must do actually? Go to that person and speak life and help them out. That is the true Christian. If you know someone's having a problem, go to them and say, what can I do to help you? Because Jesus would do that. Hallelujah. By you repeating the problem, you're not going to help. You're going to amplify the problem. Hallelujah. So do you want Jesus in your life today? So we start to speak life. I want you to declare. I want you to write down your own books. Later, I will ask you all. I want you to declare a blessing on your own life today. What do you need? You write it down. Later, when I pray, you declare what you need, what you want God to do with you, for, for you. But later, when you pray, you declare, and I'm telling you, God is going to answer your prayer. We have to speak life. As the church is so important, the moment you say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I'm telling you, that person is going to be healed. Hallelujah. Do you believe in the power of the Word of God? Amen. I can only decide amen. At the back there, do you agree? Come on. <laughs> there was once I went to this um, Presbyterian church. You know the brothers, uh, what do you call it? Brethren Church, you know how Brethren Church is? They'll stand straight. They won't turn, they won't clap hands. So I went there to share the word of God. I'm not a brethren, typical type of Brethren Church. I'm an opposite of Brethren Church. I'm a Brotherhood Church. <laughs> All right, so I went there. I was like, why is everyone so like, macam kayu? Then the worship was like, hallelujah. The, all like the hymns. I took the mic I broke that brother in church. Everyone got freaked out. They thought Satan came in. <laughs> I told them Holy Spirit came in. By the end of the service, everyone was jumping. That is the power of God. And the pastor came to me and said, this is the first time in 100 years. Hallelujah. There's always a first time for revival. Hallelujah. And today the revival is here. Hallelujah. Come on, Sraman Life Assembly. You got to shake this place. Bring life to this place that all the shop lot will know that Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a revival? Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you ready? Ask your neighbor. Are you really sure? Come on, we got to be excited because in church is where you explode. Hallelujah. How many here who are 30 and below? <laughs> Relax, I'm going to the, okay, one, only one. How many of you are 30 and below? So everyone is so old, is it? <laughs> how, many of, how many of us are 70 and below? Woo, this is the youngest. Do you know 70 and below is the youngest? Come on, nowadays the 30 and below are acting like 100. 
Come on, if you are 30 and you got to rise up and shout for joy. Hallelujah. You know, my mom, my mom is actually the most quietest woman I've seen in everyone's life, you know, everywhere. My mom will not say a word, but when it comes to worship, she will jump. Only worship. Back to reality, she goes back to her normal mode. She's quiet. You can ask. She read, my mom is very quiet. But when you worship God, she will lift up her two hands and jump for joy. Because the Spirit of God is in her. She, my mom, actually, because why I, I, I love my mom very much. Because she is the beacon of joy and Christ Jesus in our home. Until today, she will still text me and say, Have you prayed? Have you read the Bible? Have you? I say, Mom, no, I'm grateful, I'm thankful. I say, wow, don't you give up? She said, you guys, I have four, all of us are four, brothers and sisters. You guys are forever my babies, even you reach 100, even you reach 70 years old. You're always my ba- our babies. Amen. That's the love of a mother. Amen. My father is a different gangster style. He's a military man. He won't talk like that. He'll whack first before he speaks. <laughs> Amen. And, and it's so important for those who are about to marry or going to marry, Raise up your children in the ways of God. Even if you are a single parent, raise up your children in the ways of God. And one day, they will glorify the parents and then they will glorify the Lord. Amen. It's so important for us to raise up the next generation right. Amen. How many of you are going to marry soon? Can you see my, can you see my hands up? How many, only me, all married? Uh. How many are not married or no partner at all yet? One, eight. Don't be shy. Come on, guys. One, two, three, four. Oh, hallelujah. What is this? This is his, I thought he was coming forward to share about this. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray that God will give you a one who loves the Lord. Amen. Don't worry about the parents first. You know, my, my, my parents all tell me, you get a guy or girl, and the parents are not Christian, how? I say, it's okay. If she, if the girl is, accept, if the girl know who God is and accepted Jesus, a man that findeth a woman, findeth a good thing, Jesus, not a man that findeth the mother-in-law, no. <laughs> Did the Bible say that? A man that findeth a what? A wife, not the family. So if the wife loves the Lord, God will take care of the rest. Of course, it's not easy, I know. But the Lord is important. is the husband and wife. It's so important. Amen. I don't know why I'm saying this. The Holy Spirit is allowing me to say this. It's very important to find the one who loves the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the... the uh, maybe we are Asians. You know, Asians, we're very conservative. Hey, don't talk about husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. It's so important. I tell you, even in my youth there, the youth are getting haywire. I call it, I call it the word, basa word, sing it. The youths nowadays, my goodness. I am telling you, there's something wrong with them. They are so open. They don't care. Those were the days. We don't speak of all the other things. In church now, some youths, they talk so openly. This is the new generation. I call it, what, what, what do you call it? Generation Alpha. For, the, for those who are born 2000 something, I'm not really sure when, what year. Yeah, before 2000 is Gen, gen what? Gen Z. I think all of you are Gen, gen Y. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. And I know one thing, I honor and respect the elderly people. You have a principle. You have a principle, actually. Teach that principle to the next generation. In the more chill way. Some people will teach the some old, old generation they teach. Don't you know that those days military the children run away. We need to know how to do it, even in church. We need to know because Jesus, he went. How how old was Jesus when he was when he started his ministry? Thirty years old. So Jesus was a young man, and all of his disciples were young. That means there's a generational gap where Jesus wants everyone to know that He's in the middle. Even when you're 60, 30 or younger, 
there is a there is a generation that we need to bridge that generation with the power of God. Hallelujah. If you are 25 or 75 or 85 or 95, remember the life that we lived on earth with Jesus Christ matters. Amen. It's not the life that we live, oh, I'm so successful in life. Nope. There's no success without Jesus. Hallelujah. We need Jesus to be successful. Do you agree with me? So, I'll give you two practical lessons that I learned from Ezekiel chapter 37. No matter what, you need to obey God even if the situation is impossible. I repeat, you need to obey God even if the situation seems impossible. Amen. I saw you guys are having a baptism today. Praise the Lord. It should be a joyful day. When one soul is accepted, the whole what? Heaven rejoices. Who is, who's going to be baptized today? Who? Come on, come be happy guys. There's a baptism happening today. Wow. You know, in, in our church, back in Costa Damansa, when one baptized, the whole church will jump non-stop. We are showing the heavens, we are ready first. Amen. Because when one soul is safe, man, that's the joy of my heart. Do you know, do you know there was once I, I, I prayed and I saved a soul in a car. And that was my lunch and dinner. I lost a bit of weight, but I'm so happy. When one soul is safe, you don't need to eat. You'd be so happy. How many of you felt that before? When you save someone, you're so joyful. Hallelujah. That is the joy of the Lord. Now you know why God always speaks. He said, I don't need food. Remember Jesus said that? I don't need food. It's not important. The soul is important. Hallelujah. I know the ones you, the one you told me. You know, I, I, I bring all my friends, I give them burger burger and all this food. When they eat, no, they believe in Jesus. I say, no, they eat. when they eat, they believe in KFC. Food is not the answer. Fellowship is the answer. Hallelujah. Do you all have connect group? You have, right? I saw the CG. Amen. That's how you build your church. That's the only way how you build your church. When you call them to your house, they will see Jesus' lifestyle at your home. When they see you, they will come to church. Hallelujah. When they see your lifestyle at home, they will know that Jesus is alive in your home. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? And when they come to church, they will say, you know what? I follow this sister, this brother. I know Jesus is with them. I know 100%. So I know I'm in the right church. Amen. It's so important. It's so important to have Christ in your home. Amen. Do you all believe I'm saying? Do you all believe? Do you all understand my English? So far. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was, a, there was an uncle, I think he was 86 years old. Sorry, 86 years old. There is an uncle, not was, he's still alive, all right? And he comes to our church, he still can jump, he still can dance, he still smiles, he's 80 something, 86. We just did his birthday two weeks ago. His routine, every morning at 4 a.m., he prays and reads the word for one hour. Every single morning at 4 a.m. 5 a.m., he goes for a walk, which the new generation sleeps. And then what? 6 o'clock, he comes back. He start to go buy things, breakfast for his children. Can you imagine? 80 what? How many were 86 here? How many were more than that? Oh my goodness. 96? Where? Who? Who? Wow. Come on, give a hand. Praise the Lord. Oh my goodness. Wow. Can you imagine? God will bless you long life when you honor Him. Hallelujah. How many of you want a strong, long life? Then you bless His holy name every day. 
Declare that your dry bones will be awakened. You will live long. Hallelujah. You need the Word of God to strengthen your bones because God can do the impossible. Hallelujah. Wow, I'm honoured. Praise the Lord to see someone is in a youth age. He's sitting so cool there. Come on, you got, you got to give that. Praise the Lord. Even our infamous Mahdi, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's his age. God has blessed him in the life. God knows why. But God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. He, let me give you a secret. God loves everyone equal. Someone told me, you know, when I, I'm, I'm his, I'm his uh, child, he loves me more. Sorry, man. For God so loved the world. Jesus died for all humanity, not only for the Christians. Remember that always. So when you see someone in need, remember the same God loves him, the same God loves you. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, I love you. That love, do you know, as Asians, we got to learn how to speak. <laughs> There's nothing wrong saying, I love you. Because as a Christian brother and sister, we can say to one another, I love you. It's okay. But now, this junior generation, you look, I love you, finish. <laughs> hey, bro, hey, macha. <laughs> hey, she tell I love you. No, in church, lah, bro, it's, it's brother, sister love. My good. <laughs> <laughs> this is a generation. I still remember this exact story. When I was 17, this pastor said that. One girl told me I love you. She thought I love her back. She wrote a letter, a long letter for me. And said, thank you for saying I love you. I love you. Everything. I said, you. Hey, I don't love you that way. Lah. <laughs> See, what's happening? This is a generation, but that was a long time ago. Can you imagine what I love you can do for Asians? <laughs> Amen. It's so inside. I, 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 Always say that it's very important that you keep your life holy before the Lord. Amen? It is hard, right? Everywhere you turn, there's all nonsense. Now there's TV. Thank God for Malaysia. Still, for the Islamic rule, we are still what? Okay, everything's still, still censored. Everything's okay. In the United States, it's gone. Seriously, we are still in God's grace. We are still okay. Amen? We are still okay. Even there is, but we still, when there is, when there is control, it's so important to live life, to take care of ourselves. And I tell the youths, be careful. Be careful what you do. Be careful what you speak. Because Hollywood is not Christian. Hollywood is the plan of Satan. Three weeks ago, I shared this in my church. I told the Lord, I want to see. Show me, Satan, God. Please don't ask that at home. I said, show me. What is this? I, I, can I see? The Lord told me, one day, 12 o'clock, go down to the kitchen. I said, I said, seriously? You go. So I didn't go. I was like, for all waiting, Serious, uh, Lord, what, is, what, what you're telling me? You want to see? Go down. Or he'll come up. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I went down. The Lord opened my eyes to show a demon standing over there. But you know what's the best part? At the command of God, he went away. Satan has a creator. That means our God is the God of all gods. Satan is not a God. He's not a God. He is a what? He is an entity. He's a demon entity. But God created everything. So at the mention of the name of Jesus, he has to bow down. So come on, don't be afraid of the terror that flies by day. Or the pestilence, what? That comes by night. Because Jesus Christ is the highest. Hallelujah. He's the highest. And all what you saw in the movie, the devil, the face, is all a lie. The Holy wants to scare you, to show you, to, to, to bring you fear so you can feed the spirit of fear to the devil. The moment you feed him with fear, he comes stronger. 
Don't feed the evil spirit with fear. Have boldness in your spirit. Hallelujah. When you have boldness, you can speak to the devil and say, get out of my life. I'm telling you, when you say that, Jesus will come in. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, church, declare this. Let's give a shout for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do as Ezekiel. Preach the truth in love. When he spoke to the dry, the dry bones, what happened? Flesh started to come forth. And they rose up from the dead. God is showing that that is Israel. They are dead now, but God's going to raise them up. Hallelujah. So we are not dead people. We are alive. Because Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. We are alive. So smile. If you know the smile is made, no problem, we can see. Just smile. Jesus is alive. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Sometimes when you see people who are rich and famous, you see them, then you're like, whoa, no. You are richer because you have salvation. Eternity. You have what? Eternal life. That is the greatest because my God is the highest. Tell to yourself, tell to your neighbor, my God is the highest. Come on. Yes. When you say that, when you, you got to say it and mean it. I'm telling you, whatever problems you have right now is gone in the name of Jesus, I proclaim. Because He is the highest. Hallelujah. He is the highest. Come on and say, Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Amen. The moment you call Him, He's coming down. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I'm alive already. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 55, verse 8. Isaiah, this is the famous verse. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. Can you read, please? For those who are having doubts, this is the answer. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Yep. Neither are your ways my ways. Yep. Bless the Lord. Yep. Nine. As the heavens are higher than the earth. As the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. Hallelujah. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the highest. There's no one greater than Jesus. That is your miracle today. Amen. That is your miracle today. Jesus is the highest. So if you feel you're having problems in your workplace, sickness, disease, family, proclaim, I'm telling you, Jesus is the highest. Your dry bones will be awakened today. How shall we all stand? Can I have the keyboard and the drummer only? Keyboard is in the drummer. Play in the key of E. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thanks. Can we all lift our holy hands to Jesus? As I pray. Thank you, Lord. I want you all to have in your spirit that a revival is going to break forth. But it begins with your heart, not the music, not what, not me whatsoever. It is God. When I declare His holy name, a revival will break forth and you have to declare it. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you're going to see something break loose here today. There'll be a freedom in the name of Jesus. Rikaba Shatur. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father. Jesus, I pray. 
in your name, God, that at the mention of your name, Jesus, for you are holy. God, you created the heavens and the earth, and I declare in your name, Lord, that you are God. Father, when you opened the Red Sea, you did something impossible. When you brought fire down in the altar to Elijah, that was impossible. God, I pray for this church and everyone that they are going to do the impossible. Everyone who comes here will see Jesus. Everyone walks in here will receive a miracle. Jesus, I pray for everyone here, Almighty God, because there is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is power. Church. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain. Come on, break every chain. All together, come on. And there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, this, the worship leader, you come forward. In the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Thank you, Lord. And there is power, yes, Lord. Oh, there is power. Oh, in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue to sing this song, I can see there are few people here. You're having bondage, addiction. That's something that you cannot let go. Today is the day that that bondage, that addiction is going to go. Because Jesus is going to heal you. There's freedom in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. If you are the one you're having problems, please come forward. If you are the one having this in your heart, some bondages need to be broken, you come forward. I'm telling you, God it will heal you in the name of Jesus. Do not be shy. This bondage is the one that's causing you to go far away from God. If you are the one, please come forward. Or you lift your hands where you stand. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. It's so important to be free in the name of Jesus. God knows your heart. God knows who you are. He knew you'd be in your mother's womb. He has found you. He has known you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for those who have lifted their hands, Lord. Mighty God, you know them, Lord. I pray for a miracle to happen now. A miracle, Lord, to happen now. You touch them, Lord Jesus, with your holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. There is power 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, come on. Come on, church, sing it. There is power Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. For those who are going to be baptized today, please come forward. Come on. To break every chain. You baptized today. Break every chain. For those who are baptized, yes. There is power. There is power. You believe in the power of God. In the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is an army rising up. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. There is army rising Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To break every chain. Wait. 